The LA Kings are scoring more goals per game than anyone in the league, but that's yet to translate into a win over a top team. We'll discuss that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. At last check, we were at 2,356 subscribers looking to get to 2,500 by Thanksgiving. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Hope you had a great weekend. The LA Kings... Well, didn't have a great weekend, but it wasn't all bad. Maybe a bit of a microcosm of the Kings season so far. Definitely not bad. Pretty good, but could be better. The Kings lost in a shootout to the top team in the NHL, the defending Stanley Cup champions and division rivals, Vegas Golden Knights, on Saturday night. If they missed the game, here is a quick recap. Kings took a 1-0 lead on a goal from rookie Alex LaFerriere on his 22nd birthday, so a nice birthday gift to himself. Uh, on the play, Pierre Luc Dubois took the puck strong of the net. Laferriere was there to put in a rebound and uh, get his second goal of the season. Now, there was a little bit of contact between PL Dubois and the Vegas goalie, Logan Thompson. As a result, Vegas decided to challenge for goalie interference. I thought it was incidental contact, and ultimately, the war room in Toronto agreed. It was a good goal, and LA led 1 0 after one period. Second period, Trevor Lewis playing in his 900th career game. Scored to make it 2-0, but Vegas would respond with a pair of goals, and we were tied 2-2 after two. In the third, Vegas captain Mark Stone would score on a power play to make it 3-2, but L.A. would tie it up on a goal from defenseman Drew Doughty in the final seconds with the goalie pulled. We were tied 3-3 and headed to overtime. After a scoreless overtime, the Kings went to a shootout where Jack Eichel of Vegas was the only one to score. Trevor Moore, P.L. Dubois, Kevin Fiala all failed to beat Logan Thompson. Vegas skates off with the 4-3 win. Kings do pick up a point. Certainly could have won the game. Did some good things, but in the end, come up a bit short. And the Kings dropped to 4-2-2 on the season. Vegas was outshot by L.A. 39-30. Kings won more face-offs, 31-23. Kings were 0-4 for 4 on the power play. Vegas was 1-3. for 3. Vegas did have more blocked shots, 24-11. And they had more hits, 21 to 19. So as usual, after a Kings game, we talk about what we liked and what we didn't like. And if you're an everydayer and you watch the show frequently, uh, you may be starting to see a pattern here as far as some of the things we talk about uh, in the wins and losses. So what did we like? Well, first off, the Kings went toe-to-toe with the defending Stanley Cup champions, a team that has not lost in regulation so far this season. Vegas is now 8-0-1 leading the NHL with 17 points, and the Kings could have won this game. It was close. It was competitive. Other than a few minutes in the opening period, I thought it was incredibly even. Uh, Vegas uh, is a beatable team. They're very good. Um, Certainly facing them in a playoff series would be uh, challenging, but I think there's no question in my mind, after watching one matchup between these two teams, that the Kings can go toe-to-toe with the top team in the NHL and, again, could have very easily won this game. I thought the Kings, for the most part, um, did have a better shot mentality. We've talked about that in recent episodes. And I wonder if what Drew Doughty did in that second game in Arizona maybe has translated a little bit into what other Kings defensemen are looking to do, and that is put more shots on goal. Matt Roy, in particular, I thought was looking for a shot more in this game against Vegas. He ended up being credited with five shots on goal. Uh, Also nearly scored uh, while crashing the net as well. So he was looking to get more involved offensively. Um, I I like seeing our defensemen be more active and getting the puck on net. Hopefully this is something that has been stressed after seeing the success that Drew Doughty has had of late. Uh, And Tom McClellan just needs to tell the the other blue liners, 
keep keep doing what Drew is doing. Um, I thought the Kings again got contributions up and down the lineup. Fourth line scores another goal. Trevor Lewis getting a goal on a putback shot off a shot from Mikey Anderson. So another defenseman getting active in the play. Uh, and the Kings continue to be very comfortable rolling four lines out. And hopefully that will continue because that will just make the Kings a better team, especially come playoff time. If you can roll four lines out there against your opponent, that is a big advantage in wearing them down and just keeping a better kind of flow with the team that you're not relying or double shifting on, on, on one line or two lines. If you can roll four lines, it's a big advantage for a team. And the Kings are doing well in that department so far on the season. Kings are showing that they will fight to the finish. Uh, we have seen in the last two games, LA scoring late goals in kind of desperation time. Uh, one of them obviously was to get a win over Arizona. The other one to tie it up and eventually at least get a point against Vegas. Uh, I think good to establish that kind of confidence when things are tight and the clock is ticking down and the Kings know that they can make a play or somebody's going to step up in a key moment to give them a chance to win by, again, getting a, a game-winning goal like Drew Doughty did in Arizona or getting uh, the game-tying goal like Drew Doughty did against Vegas and giving them a chance to win it in overtime or a shootout. Uh, individually, I thought Cam Talbot was very good in net again. We're going to break down his game more coming up in just a minute. Alex LaFerriere gets another goal, and um, he's been obviously very opportunistic. Um, this, this time, literally opportunistic, going to the net, looking for a rebound, Great to see a young player like him being aggressive. Uh, he continues to look like he belongs in the NHL, and that is obviously a great thing with Victor Arvidsson being out of the lineup. And certainly he's no Victor Arvidsson, uh, which everybody knows. But under the circumstances, I think that Laferriere is, again, filling in very well. Uh, he is doing at least as, as much as anyone could have expected. And I don't think it's unreal unrealistic to think that he should only get better as he gets more experience. Drew Doughty, uh, he's playing with some confidence, uh, still showing that he's got a lot to give, still playing all those minutes, um, but he loves doing that. I know, you know, at some point that's probably going to have to change, but it doesn't look like it's right now. Um, he has come up clutch in key moments so far in the last two games. Uh, again, getting the game winning goal against Arizona, tying it up against Vegas, beautiful shot from the point. Uh, so hopefully again, Drew Doughty keeps doing that. Uh, he's get, gaining confidence right now and getting the job done. He's a hot hand right now for the LA Kings. Andreas England continues to be a physical presence. Now, he didn't uh, have any real big hits in this one, but he did drop the gloves again, uh, got in a fight with Nicholas Haig of Vegas. Pretty even fight. Um, I, I, they, uh, England continues, though. He, his helmet seems to come off kind of easily when he gets in fights, and also his jersey will get pulled up over his head. Uh, more often than not, um, I'm not sure what he can do to kind of prevent that. Maybe strap on the chin strap a little bit tighter. But when that happens, it does leave him a little bit more vulnerable to to getting hit. So hopefully that's something that he can maybe address. Um, he did get called for a slashing penalty as well as the five-minute uh, fighting major. Uh, I thought that was a bad call. The referee missed what caused the fight to begin with when Nicholas Haig cross-checked Alex Laferriere away from the play. Uh, the slash was basically to get Haig's attention to say, hey, let's go. And he obliged by dropping the gloves, but uh, it should have been matching minors and, and matching five-minute majors for fighting. Fortunately, the Kings were able to kill off that penalty. But I love Andres England sticking up for the rookie. Um, and, and let's be honest, that element of his game is likely helping Andreas England stay in the lineup. Tobias Bjornfoot does not have that in his game as do really any of the other players, to be honest, on the Kings roster right now. As long as England is competent defensively, which I think he has been, I don't see him coming out of the lineup because of that physical element that he does bring to the team. So those were some of the things we liked. What were some of the things we didn't really like from Vegas? And we're going to break down the night for Golden Cam Talbot. We'll do that next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. You shouldn't have to worry when it comes to buying tickets for your next big event. I don't because I use Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I'm going on vacation to New York, leaving Wednesday morning. I am still doing the show, by the way. I'll make it work. Uh, but I'm going to see an NHL game at Madison Square Garden Thursday, and I use Game Time to buy my tickets, and I'm really looking forward to it. The app is very easy to navigate and use. 
Uh, you can get killer last minute deals all in pricing and their best price guaranteed. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. I love it. You can view your seats uh, before you buy them. You know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Game time takes all the guesswork out of buying tickets. All in prices show you the total upfront so you know what you're getting. A great deal without any hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps on the app. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem Locked On NHL L O C K E D O N NHL for twenty dollars off. Game Time. Download the app. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. The LA Kings face the Maple Leafs in Toronto on Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast of your LA Kings with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. Okay, so what were a few things from the Kings lost to Vegas on Saturday that we did not like so much? Uh, I mentioned the Kings were right there with Vegas, top team in the league. That's great, but the Kings need to get some wins over some of the top teams in the league to prove that they're amongst the top teams in the league. And that hasn't really happened so far. Vegas leads the Pacific. Colorado leads the Central. Boston leads the Atlantic or the Metropolitan, whichever whichever it is they play in. I'm more focused on the West. The point is, all three of those teams are division leaders. They're all very good teams right now, early in the season. And the Kings have lost to all three of those teams. Now, they again, they were competitive, especially in the game against Vegas. Um, but again, when the Kings face these types of teams that they're likely going to see in the playoffs, we need to see some success against these teams, not just uh, competitive, not just close, uh, need to get some wins. So the Kings need to get over that hump a little bit. Uh, the Kings ultimately outscored Vegas in the first period, but again, it was another slow start at the very beginning. Vegas could have easily been up two nothing in this game early, if not for goalie Cam Talbot. We'll get into more uh, about his night in a bit, but Talbot stopped Jack Eichel on a breakaway in the first couple of minutes. Jonathan Marchessault had a great putback attempt in close. Those are two of the top offensive players for Vegas. Credit Cam Talbot for keeping them off the board, but the Kings need to emphasize starting strong from the opening faceoff. Yeah, you want to win the first period ultimately, and they did against Vegas, had the one nothing lead and played much better in that second half of the first period than the, the opening, but just... Got to get some better starts right off the hop for the LA Kings. Uh, the Kings lost a special teams battle against Vegas. They allowed a goal on the power play and went 0 for 4 on their own power play, including a big four minutes of power play time after a double minor. Uh, the Kings were down a goal at that point. LA has to take advantage of power play time like that. Getting a double minor when you're down a goal, make the other team pay for those mistakes, and the Kings, more often than not, are not really doing that in key moments. Uh, matter of fact, on that four-minute double minor, they didn't even really get any good shots on goal. And, uh, you know, they also had uh, a chance after the Golden Knights challenged for the goalie interference, make them pay for that as well. And the Kings did not. So got to be better on the power play. And I think the Kings need to take uh, an approach that they've taken with the penalty kill. And that's be more aggressive. Uh, the PK is doing well, um, being with that, having that more aggressive style. I, I think the Kings need to adopt that on the power play as well. Forget about being pretty. Now they are moving the puck around well. They're 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 keeping the puck in the zone, making the defense skate. But in the end, it just isn't leading to any quality, high scoring chances in danger areas so far. Um, really, they're just kind of setting up. At least the number one power play unit kind of just setting up Adrian Kempe on that right wing or Arthur Kaliev on the second power play unit. You got to be more aggressive on the power play and forget about making the pretty play to me. I think it's just, let's get shots on net and let's crash the net. And then once we establish that and we get a few goals and it starts to kind of flow a little bit, my friend always says it's like the ketchup bottle, right? It's slow at first, but once it starts to flow, it'll flow. Hopefully that'll happen with the Kings power play. But right now I just think they need to have, again, more of that shot mentality, get pucks on net, crash the net and, and good things will happen. And eventually you can maybe start to be a little bit more creative on the power play, but I'd like to see him be a little bit more aggressive and deliberate on the power play. I'm not sure why the Kings aren't better in the shootout, but so far on the season, uh, the Kings have gone to the shootout twice and they've lost both times. They had that nine round shootout against Carolina early in the season. And now this one against Vegas uh, Kings are two for 10 in shootout attempts so far. 
And for a team that leads the NHL in goals per game, clearly LA has a lot of offensive talent and firepower. Not sure why they're having such a tough time early on with the shootouts, but hopefully that's something that they can work on in practice. It, it certainly is something they can uh, and get a few better results uh, in that regard. All right. As for goaltender Cam Talbot, I thought another solid game. Uh, I was happy to see head coach Todd McCullen go back to him after he had to come in in relief of Phoenix Copley the night before. Uh, I think early in the season, that's not that big of a deal as opposed to maybe later in the year when you're worried about wear and tear on a 36-year-old goalie. Now, it all does add up, but I thought that was the right move, and Talbot showed that the confidence McCullen had in him it was, was well served. I thought, um, in addition to those couple of early saves in the first period that I talked about, I thought Cam Talbot was sharp uh, throughout the game. Um, as for the goals that the Kings did allow, we'll go into them real quick. Uh, the first goal, Talbot did make the initial save on a backhand shot. Rebound was uh, in front of the net. Andreas Englund and Andre Kopitar were occupied with William Carlson, who was right at the top of the crease. And that allowed former King Michael Amadio to kind of sneak in behind them, get to the rebound and put it in. So Talbot makes the first save. He was a little bit slow in tracking where the rebound went. Um, but uh, his teammates could have also helped him out a little bit more with better net front, uh, net front coverage. Not a soft goal, um, but again, a little bit slow in tracking the rebound. And then again, his teammates uh, were not there to have his back on that one. So not a soft goal, but a little bit of a breakdown between both goalie and his teammates. Uh, the second goal, Kings turned it over and were slow getting back defensively, allowed Vegas to get a two-on-one break. William Carrier carried the puck into the zone took the shot uh, in that situation. Talbot has the shooter and the one defenseman back has to make sure that that pass doesn't get over on the two on one. Uh, it never even was attempted as Carrier went in and just shot it right from the get go. Low shot on the ice. Um, it, it beat Talbot uh, uh, glove side. Uh, I think it might've even went off the post and in good shot. Got to credit Carrier. And, and again, uh, fault the teammates for allowing a two on one break against their goaltender. The third goal was Vegas on the power play. Uh, Kings fail to clear the zone. Uh, Mark Stone gets a point blank chance from just outside the crease and put in a perfect shot into the upper left corner. That's unstoppable. Can't uh, ask Cam Talbot to to do that on a player who's a an elite player who's a clutch player. So that was uh, unfortunate. The Kings couldn't clear the zone when they had a chance on the power play, and obviously that can hurt you. Uh, as for the shootout, only one player scored. That was Jack Eichel of the Golden Knights, scored on his first attempt. Talbot did stop Shea Theodore on the second attempt, but because L.A. couldn't score on either of their first three attempts, Vegas was able to skate off with the extra point. All in all, I thought a good showing for Cam Talbot. Uh, I, I think uh, Todd McClellan, I know he hasn't said Cam Talbot is the Kings' number one goalie, but I think his actions speak louder than words. Uh, Talbot, again, getting the starts in the big games, getting more starts than Phoenix Copley. And uh, for, according to uh, uh, reports I saw online today, Cam Talbot's going to start on Tuesday in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. So the Kings haven't said Cam Talbot's the number one goalie, but Cam Talbot's the number one goalie right now for the Kings. And I think so far, so good. Again, he's 36 years old. We're going to need to have uh, some help from either Phoenix Copley or David Riddich uh, to spell him. Uh, and especially late in the year, trying to keep them a little bit fresher going to the playoffs. But as it stands right now, obviously things can change. Um, but so far, so good, in my opinion, for Cam Talbot as an L.A. King. Up next, we're going to look at where the Kings are in the standings in the Pacific Division uh, as we get ready to close out October. We're also going to have an Ontario rain report as well. That is next on Locked on L.A. Kings, your team every day. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get on the action than now. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, point spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Obviously, we love to bet on the NFL, but you can bet on the NHL as well. Uh, you want to place a bet on the Kings to win Tuesday in Toronto? Well, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet all season long on the NHL and the NFL as well. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. 
The LA Kings face the Maple Leafs in Toronto Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast of your LA Kings with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. And that game is not going to be broadcast locally on television on Bally Sports. Uh, that is going to be an ESPN game. So if you want to hear our friends, Nick Nixon, Jim Fox, and Daryl Evans, as a matter of fact, I think it's just Nick and Daryl when it's radio only. But again, catch that on Sirius XM. Search LA Kings. All right, let's check in on the Pacific Division standings as we start a new week. The Vegas Golden Knights on top of the Pacific, 8-0-1 for 17 points. Uh, the defending Stanley Cup champs have the best record and most points right now in the NHL, as for the past week for Vegas, they beat the Flyers, lost in overtime to the Blackhawks, and then beat the Kings in a shootout. Vancouver Canucks continue to be a little bit of a surprise. They are in second place in the Pacific, 5-2-1 and one, the record for 11 points. Uh, last week, they beat the Predators, Blues, and lost to the Rangers in overtime. Our LA Kings are right now in third place with 10 points, so one point behind Vancouver, 4-2-2 two and two, the record for the Kings, beat the Coyotes twice, and then lost to Vegas in the shootout. Anaheim right now has moved into fourth place in the Pacific with a three and four record. They've got eight points last week. They beat the Blue Jackets, beat the Bruins in overtime and knocked off the Flyers. So uh, going into Monday's action, the Ducks right now actually would be the final wildcard team out of the Western Conference. Seattle's uh, righted the ship a little bit after a bad start there. Two, five and two for six points. Last week, they beat the Red Wings in overtime, lost to the Hurricanes in overtime and the loss to the Panthers. Edmonton still struggling, but they did get a big win on Sunday night. Uh, they're five, two, and one for five points. They beat the Wild. They shut. They were shut up by the Rangers and Jonathan Quick, by the way, who's off to a great start for New York. Um, they uh, also uh, beat the Flames in the Heritage Classic. That was the outdoor game played Sunday between those two big Alberta rivals. Calgary lost that game to Edmonton. They're two, three, and one for five points last week. They lost to the Rangers. To the Blues, and as we talked about, to the Oilers, and bringing up the rear, not only in the Pacific, but in the entire NHL, is the San Jose Sharks. 0-8-1 for one point, still the only winless team left in the NHL. They lost to the Panthers, lost to the Lightning, lost to the Hurricanes, and lost to the Capitals last week. Time for a rain report. The LA Kings AHL affiliate, the Ontario Rain, Won their fifth straight game on Sunday, knocking off the Abbotsford Canucks 5-2. Francesco Pinelli gets his first goal as a professional. The Reign also got goals from defenseman Cole Krieger, as well as forwards Charles Udon, Jacob Doty, and Martin Kromiak. Goalie Eric Portillo now 2-0 as a pro. Former Michigan star made 25 saves in the win. Ontario is now 5-2 on the season. Wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the passing of Adam Johnson. You may have heard about his tragic death over the weekend. Uh, just a horrific incident playing in a game professionally in England. Took a skate blade to the neck. Adam Johnson played 42 games for the Ontario Reign uh, over parts of the 2020-21 and 2021-22 seasons. He was a teammate of many of the current uh, Reign players like Jacob Doty, TJ Tynan, Akil Thomas, Tyler Madden. Taylor Ward, Alex Turcott, Jacob Moverar. Um, after the Reigns win on Sunday, they announced Adam Johnson as the number one star of the game. The players took a Reign jersey with Johnson's name and number on it. They skated out center ice. They draped it over a stool that was on the ice and then left it there in tribute of their fallen teammate. Uh, obviously, a very nice gesture by the Ontario Reign. Thoughts and prayers to the teammates, friends, and family of Adam Johnson, who was just 29 years old. Uh, certainly, hockey can bring people together in tough times and in good times. That certainly is a tough time right now for uh, the Ontario Reign and uh, the hockey world in general. That is, uh, it was very difficult to uh, to hear about, and um, there's not much else to say about that. On a much happier note, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, one of the listeners of this show, Tyler into Hatchby, who's emailed a few times. I got to meet him and his family before the game on Saturday. Uh, what a great Kings family, him and his wife and his two kids, and happy to see his adorable daughter, Violet, get a puck in warm-up from Drew Doughty. She recently lost a tooth, made a sign that showed her smiling face with the tooth missing, and then a picture of Drew Doughty was next to it with his hockey smile. And Drew saw it and gave her a puck in warm-up. So great job, Drew. And thanks to uh, Tyler and uh, his family for their support of this show and 
of the LA Kings. Hey, coming up uh, for you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch Locked on LA Kings every day, coming up tomorrow, we're going to be joined by a friend of the show, Russell Morgan from Hockey Royalty. He's a fellow podcaster, does good work for HockeyRoyalty.com covering the LA Kings. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, talking to him tomorrow for the first time this season, get his thoughts on what's going on with the Kings. On Wednesday, we'll obviously have a recap of the matchup in Toronto against the always tough Maple Leafs. That'll be before I get on a plane for New York. Thursday, we'll preview the Kings game against Ottawa. And then, of course, on Friday, we'll recap that game as the Kings get set to go out on a little road trip. Uh, we'll also have some of your emails and your YouTube comments on a Feedback Friday as well. Should be a fun week and maybe a little bit of a busy week for me here on Locked on LA Kings. Hope you will join us for the entire week. If you want to send me an email, talk about anything we've talked about on this show or anything involving the Kings, your emails are always welcome. Locked on Eddie at gmail.com is the email address E D D I E. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, of course you can always post your comments in the uh, comment section on the episodes. Love for you to stay interactive with the show by following us on X Twitter uh, and Instagram. We are at locked on LA Kings. And I actually did post some pictures uh, on both Twitter and Instagram of uh, me meeting uh, Tyler and his family and just some pictures of me being out of the game, which was my first of the season after uh, after getting over uh, COVID there. So it was great to get back out at crypto.com arena. Got to say hi to a lot of people I haven't seen in a while. And uh, so that was very, very fun. Looking forward to getting back out there again soon. And if you're going to be out at a Kings game, let me know. And uh, always love to meet up listeners of the show and fellow Kings fans. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings go.